Hello friends, welcome to Dr. Sai Physiology Academy, DOPA for short. This is the place where we make the learning of physiology easy, exciting and effective. Thank you for joining me. And if you're new to this channel, you're especially welcome. And if you love the content that we share, kindly click the like button and also the subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on notifications so that you don't get to miss any new content that we share. All right, so let's get started. Now, today we're going to be dealing with a brand new topic, homeostasis. Homeostasis. A lot of times, students confuse it with another word that is called hemostasis okay but they are different this is homeostasis all right two important words there now what is homeostasis homeostasis is a very fundamental concept and one of the foundational fundamental concepts in physiology without it there is no physiology okay because it has to do with balance now take a look at this this diagram just a schematic diagram now it's just like a tug of war here there are three persons here there are three persons on this other side and they are pulling pulling applying force left right and because they are of the same size they have the same equal number okay there is balance but if you add probably add one person to this side the force increases and it pulls it to this other extreme but homeostasis is talking about balance now look at these two words homeo comes from the word meaning same or similar Okay, then stasis means stand still. So it's talking about staying in the same level, something having a similar value that doesn't change much. And there's something called dynamic constancy and it has to do with reference ranges that means the different values of physiological variables let me write it down here physiological variables physiological variables that means they shouldn't change too much that's what I mean by dynamic constancy or dynamic equilibrium okay variables are things that can change but it's talking about that it should not change it should maintain the same level because these two forces opposing forces are pulling it and making it to have a balance remember one of the underlying principles basic underlying principles of physiology is that what that the body functions through multiple control systems that are working in opposition to each other but are necessary for health and survival so this homeostasis has to do with that balance so what how do we define homeostasis homeostasis is the maintenance of a stable balanced internal environment and then you begin to ask yourself mr lecturer what is internal environment what do you mean by internal environment let us write it let us write it down here okay maintenance maintenance of stable internal environment environment so you ask yourself what do we mean by 
internal environment. Now, that is where this diagram comes into play. Now, look at this diagram. The cell, you know, general physiology, we are starting with the cell to understand everything that goes on with the cell that will lead us to understand how the body works, the mechanisms of body functions. Now, this is the cell. The cell, whatever surrounds something, is called its environment. Is that also? Now, everything that is outside me, it's my environment. Whatever surrounds you is an environment. So, there is something that surrounds all cells. The cells are not just there in a dry environment. They are surrounded by water. They are surrounded by fluid, body fluids. We call them body fluids. Now, look at this. This is the cell up to this point. Okay, the cell membrane stops at this point. Now, surrounding the cell, you are just showing a portion of it. This portion is called the interstitial fluid. Okay? So the interstitial fluid surrounds or bits the cell. So that means it is the environment because it's what surrounds the cell. And after the interstitial fluid, you have plasma. Now, this thing you are seeing here is a blood vessel. You know, the blood. You are going to learn all that as you go. But just to make you understand this thing about internal environment. The blood is made up of plasma and red blood cell, white blood cell and all of that. So, the plasma is also another body fluid, but in a different compartment. Interstitial fluid in a different compartment. They are all extracellular. That means they are outside the cell. So this one is in a blood vessel that is in direct communication. Look at it with this interstitial fluid. So the cell, whatever is inside the cell, the fluid, the cell also has fluid. Inside the cell is called intracellular. Here, intra cellular fluid okay call it icf intracellular fluid now this intracellular fluid is in communication with the interstitial fluid that is just immediately outside the cell membrane okay and this interstitial fluid is in communication with the plasma which is with three blood vessels then blood vessels themselves they are in communication with the outside world, which is the external environment. So this external environment, okay, that is outside your skin, is called external environment, okay? Then this one here that is surrounding the cell, especially this interstitial fluid, and also the plasma, is the internal environment. Because everything that will impact that will affect the cell. It has to come from here. The cell gives out and takes in from whatever is contained in this compartment, the extracellular fluid. You understand? So everything, temperature, glucose, food, water, electrolytes, and everything, the cell gets it from this place. And if it is not in order, it can affect the cell. So they say where the body does it, that it tries to maintain stability in the different values. We're going to talk about them shortly. But this is what happens. It maintains that stability. Okay? So now, there are three points. Just let me just put this across to you. Three major systems that are mainly responsible for communicating with the external environment. One of them is the digestive system. Now, the food that you eat is coming from the external environment. You take it outside and you put it into your mouth. It goes down to your intestine and then it digested and it's absorbed. The process of absorption is those nutrients that have been digested, they are transferred into the bloodstream, as into this plasma. 
Okay? Then from this plasma, they enter here. Then from here, they now enter into the cell where all the different biochemical reactions and processes, physiological processes, they occur. Okay? So you see that the, your digestive system is one of the pathways that communicates from the inside the cell to the internal environment and then to the outside world. So it impacts a lot on the state of this entire environment which can affect the cell. That's one of them. Then secondly, you have the respiratory system and that one has to do with air. You're taking oxygen and carbon dioxide from the outside environment and it goes into your lungs and from your lungs it transfers into the blood also that's what the lung does it has a way of transferring that oxygen in the air and it enters into the blood stream that's this plasma now and then here here then also carbon dioxide comes from here enters here enters here and goes out again to the outside world so that is another system that communicates and impacts a lot on the state of this internal environment okay then the next one that one has to do with mainly taking out okay now is the excretory system the renal system the kidney does that so what the kidney does all the nutrients they enter this to the cell manufacturing processes chemical reactions they take place and waste products are produced then they enter into the plasma and they go to the kidney they are now filtered out and they become urine and you pass it out into the external environment very important so this is what happens so we are going to now ask ourselves why does the body want balance it's very important you must always ask yourself the purpose if not you will just cram definitions that may not make any sense to you maintenance of stability why do we want stability that it should not change too much either up or too much down we're going to learn that don't go anywhere after this break All right, welcome back. Now, we want to know why, 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 when the purpose of something is not known, it's cramming, and cramming does not help you. You easily forget. Now, why does the body want stability, not to move too much? Now, one of them, we're gonna be looking at it from some standpoint, homeostasis, from the standpoint of enzyme enzyme now you know what enzyme is they have to do with facilitating chemical reactions and you know that physiologic processes and function they have to do with chemical reactions so enzymes are very delicate very very delicate and they are made up of proteins. Another underlying principle that proteins are the structural, the functional molecules of the cell of life. So, the two major things that affect an enzyme, that can stop an enzyme from functioning, and if an enzyme stops functioning, chemical reactions stop functioning. The, the cell stops functioning. Two things. One of them is pH. You know what pH is? Another one is temperature. pH has to do with acidity, alkaline. If the acidity of this internal environment is too high, it stops ex enzymes to functioning. Okay? If the alkalinity is too high, it also stops the enzyme from functioning. The same thing with temperature. When the temperature is tilting too high, it stops the enzyme from it denatures the protein. Proteins, they can be denatured and change the, the structure. That's what denature means. And they stop functioning. 
So the body does not want anything to happen to this enzyme. So it tries to maintain the temperature in a very narrow range, usually between 36 to 37 degrees centigrade. Then the pH around 7, you know, pH is 0 to 14. So around the 7, it maintains. So that's how, why the body wants to maintain temperature so temperature is one of those physiological variables so we're going to be dealing with it it's very special very important and another thing number two energy energy is what powers all those chemical reactions and energy is gotten from where when you're going to learn it in biochemistry but let me mention it two things oxygen and glucose Oxygen powers and activates glucose to liberate energy. So the body also tries to control the levels of oxygen in the body and also the levels of glucose in the body. Okay? So there are mechanisms that the body it tries to control it. Like the oxygen is going too low. It activates certain mechanisms and make it to go higher to increase. And if it's going too high, it also makes it reduce. Then also related to this oxygen is red blood cell. ROBC. You know, red blood cells are the ones that carry oxygen. So it's related to it also. So the body also wants the number of red blood cells in the body to be maintained at a certain level because it's the one that carries oxygen so the value the number of red blood cells is something that the body also controls to be balanced so you see there are thousands of them like that let me also mention another one water and electrolytes okay now, of course, you know how important water is. Water is the medium, universal solution, where all the chemical reactions occur. If the water content is too high, it dilutes the, the solution, the system. If it's too, it's very concentrated, you have dehydrated. So the body wants to maintain a stable water content. It regulates it. It controls how much water is in your body. That's why when one of them is you're thirsty, you drink water. When it's reducing, it makes you drink water. And all of that, that's, that's what we're going to be dealing with later in renal physiology. Electrolytes too. Electrolyte has to do with sodium ion, potassium ion, chloride ion, and all those ions. They are also important in the functioning of nerves. You know, nerves, they conduct electricity. And the mechanism in which they use the electricity is the interplay of these ions. So it maintains the value of these ions in the blood, in the internal environment. You see that? So this is just to give you some insight into why. Because whenever there is a problem with some of these variables, it can affect the functioning of the cell. Okay? So another one, for example, is CO2. You know, CO2 is the product of glucose metabolism to lead CO2 and oxygen and all of that. So it's one of those byproducts. If it builds up so much in the cell, it will inhibit and stop enzymes from functioning. Chemical reactions stop, everything stops. That's how it injures the cell, and that's how death results. When all these things are not balanced, sicknesses result. And when there is sickness, there is death. If it's not managed well, right? So you see how homeostasis has to do with health and survival. It's very fundamental. So this is what homeostasis is all about. Maintenance of a stable entire environment. Now the next lecture, we're going to be dealing with how exactly does it control this thing. I'm going to be talking about control systems. It uses control systems to maintain the stability. All right, we're going to be dealing that in the next lecture. See you there.